Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to illustrate the use of this equation. So marginal revenue is equal to the price multiplied by 1 plus 1 divided by the elasticity of demand with an example. My example is going to focus around this demand equation. So quantity demanded is equal to 100 minus the price. Now in the video, I do presume a little bit of previous knowledge. Basically, I'm going to assume that you can understand the diagram on the screen here. Part of this understanding is recognizing that this here is our demand curve where both of our intercepts are equal to 100 and the slope is negative one. That the marginal revenue that corresponds to this demand curve looks like this with the same vertical axis intercept as our demand curve, but double the slope. The equation for the marginal revenue curve is actually here. It's equal to 100 minus two times the quantity. Now the marginal revenue curve intersects the horizontal axis at 50, which is exactly the midpoint of the demand curve. Importantly for this video, if we were to extend the marginal revenue curve further than we usually do, we would see that it becomes negative. And so I've illustrated that with the red dotted line here. Importantly, too, is understanding that our elasticity of demand changes along the demand curve. So we go from perfectly elastic at the vertical axis intercept here, and the elasticity value is negative infinity. In the upper top half region of our demand curve, we have elastic demand. So our, our elasticity value is less than negative one. At the midpoint, we get to the point of unit elasticity with an elasticity value of negative one. In the lower region, as we move along the demand curve, we become increasingly more inelastic. And eventually at the horizontal intercept, the value of our elasticity is zero, which is perfectly inelastic. So that's our background. Just to avoid a common confusion, I'm just going to note that we read this diagram by considering different price and quantity combinations from our demand curve. And then we read up from the quantity to find marginal revenue. So for instance, as you can see here on the screen in green, if we have a quantity of 20, that corresponds to a price of 80. And reading up from the quantity, that level there is our marginal revenue associated with that quantity, which is equal to 60, uh, which you can calculate by using the equation for marginal revenue that's at the top of the screen. So that's basically our background. If you need help with any of this uh, theory, I've linked to some videos in the description and also above uh, that go through this all. All right, well, in this video, the equation that we're interested in links marginal revenue to the price and our elasticity of demand. From our diagram here, we can already make some connections between these elements. And I have four points in particular that uh, I've noted of interest. So reading the diagram, like I showed you before, we can see, for instance, that at the vertical axis intercept of our demand and marginal revenue curves, the price is equal to 100, quantity demanded is zero, our marginal revenue is equal to the price, so equal to 100, and our elasticity is negative infinity. So that's our first point. The second point is that in the upper region of our demand curve, our demand is elastic or less than negative one. And here our marginal revenue is positive, but it decreases as we move along the demand curve. The third point concentrates on our midpoint. Here our price and quantity is 50. Our marginal revenue is zero and demand is unit elastic or equal to negative one. The last point looks at the lower region where demand is inelastic and here our marginal revenue is actually negative. We can see that on our diagram. The numerical values of our elasticity here will be between zero and negative one. So that's four points that in some way relate marginal revenue to elasticity and price. What I'm going to do now is to demonstrate these four points by using our formula. And in doing that, you can get a feel for how the formula can be used. So let's start by thinking about the midpoint because that's the easiest point to consider. At this point, our quantity is 50, our price is 50, and our elasticity is negative one. And we've noted here that at this point, our marginal revenue should be equal to zero. That's what we've seen on our diagram. 
Well, applying our formula, we have marginal revenue is equal to, well, the price, which is 50, multiplied by 1 plus 1 divided by, well, our elasticity is negative 1, which simplifies to 50 times 1 minus 1, which is 50 times 0, which is equal to 0. And that's exactly what we expect. At the midpoint, the marginal revenue associated uh, with that quantity, with that area of the demand curve, is exactly 0. So we've used our formula to confirm one of our points. Let's now try the vertical axis intercept where our elasticity is negative infinity, our price is 100, our quantity is zero. So our formula would be, well, marginal revenue is equal to the price, which is 100, multiplied by one plus one divided by negative infinity. The question is here, how do we evaluate uh, this term here, one divided by negative infinity? Well, actually this value is technically undefined because negative infinity is not an actual number. Well, what we can do in cases like these is do something we call taking the limit. So to give a quick explanation, we're just going to consider the general case. So in this general case, we're going to evaluate the term one over X, where X is some variable, and we're going to think about the value of one over X as X goes to either, we can do plus or minus infinity because it actually comes out the same. And actually this limit is equal to zero. What we're doing when we take the limit is we're considering the value of this fraction, one over X, as X goes uh, either really, really, really big, so towards infinity or really, really, really small towards uh, negative infinity. Now the value of this limit comes out as zero and this makes a lot of sense if we think about it. For instance, considering the case if X goes towards negative infinity, well, let's start something at kind of slightly negative. So if X was say negative two, then the value of the fraction would be one divided by negative two, which is negative a half. If X was a little bit more negative, so a little bit further towards negative infinity, well, let's just say something like negative four, well, we would get one over negative four, which is actually larger than one over negative two, and it's closer to zero. If X was really negative, say negative 800, the value of the fraction would be well one over negative 800, which is again a larger number. It's closer to zero than either one over negative four or one over negative two. And the idea here is that as the denominator gets infinitely large in magnitude, that the value of the whole term approaches zero. So if we apply this to our equation, we evaluate marginal revenue. We're going to take the limit as our elasticity of demand approaches negative infinity. And we're going to get the same result as the general case. So we can take this as being equal to zero. So we'll get marginal revenue is equal to, well, our price is 100 and uh, then we have one plus a zero. And that's equal to 100, which is again confirming what we expected um, from our points that we outlined before. So let's do something a little harder. Let's have a think about what happens in the elastic region of the demand curve, that upper half of the demand curve, which if you recall, corresponds to this portion of our marginal revenue curve. Now our equation should give us the result that marginal revenue will be positive, but decreasing as we move down the demand curve, as demand gets less elastic. Well, one thing that we do know is that our price is above 50 in this region, so price is positive. And we do know that our elasticity in this region will be less than negative one. Now, evaluating what happens in the parentheses is the hard part of thinking about this equation, but once you get it, you'll be, you'll be fine. I find it useful to think about it like this. Because our elasticity is negative, we can think about the terms in the parentheses as one minus one divided by the absolute value or the magnitude of the elasticity. If our demand is elastic, we can tell that the value of this fraction will always be smaller than one. As a consequence, the value of the parenthesis will always be positive because one minus something less than one is something positive. And our price is positive in this region, so we get a positive multiplied by another positive, and so marginal revenue comes out positive overall. For instance, if our elasticity was negative three, then the value of the parenthesis would be, well, we have one 
plus one divided by negative three. We can take the negative out and we're left with one minus one over three, which is two over three. Two over three multiplied by this positive price will give us a positive marginal revenue. To give another example, let's think about if our elasticity was more elastic. So it would be closer to the intercept, it would be higher on the demand curve. And let's say it was something like negative 15. Well, the terms in the parenthesis would end up to be one plus one over negative 15, which simplifies to one minus one over 15. Uh, and this is equal to 14 over 15. And actually this value 14 over 15 is closer to one. And so hopefully you've noticed or you can think about this and consider that the more elastic we are, the larger that magnitude on the denominator of the fraction will be and the closer the term in the parenthesis will be to one. And this means that our marginal revenue will be larger. So this equation then explains the decreasing nature of our marginal revenue curve since as we move along the demand curve, we get less and less elastic. One limiting case here is actually the case that we saw before. When we're perfectly elastic, the parenthesis values exactly at equal to one and marginal revenue is equal to the price. We can contrast this to the case when we have inelastic demand, which corresponds to this part of our demand and our marginal revenue curve. Well, in this part of the demand curve, price is still positive, so we don't have to worry about any, any weird things like negative prices, though it will be less than 50. Our elasticity value will be between zero and negative one. So we can think about it in a similar way as we did before, because our elasticity is negative, the terms in parentheses can be thought of as one minus one divided by the absolute value or the magnitude of the elasticity. Because we're inelastic, however, our denominator here will be less than one. And so it follows that the value of this fraction will be greater than one. One minus something greater than one will give us something negative. So whilst the price is positive, it will multiply something negative in our equation and marginal revenue ends up negative. So for instance, if our elasticity was negative a half, then the value of the parenthesis would be one plus one divided by negative a half. We take the negative out and we're left with one minus one divided by a half. One divided by a half is two, so we're left with one minus two in that parenthesis, which is just equal to negative one. Negative one multiplied by a positive price will give us a negative marginal revenue. And this is consistent with our points before and uh, demonstrates what we wanted to demonstrate. Actually, I'll leave it to you to play around with this equation and you should see that the more inelastic we are, the more negative our marginal revenue is. And so that's it. I hope that this video helped you understand or approach uh, thinking about this equation that links marginal revenue to price and elasticity. Uh, if it did, please like and subscribe. If you haven't already, um, have a lovely day or night though.